let's embark. How far are we? Are we in our year-long challenge? We're at two fifty-five out of four hundred, so a little bit more than five eighths, closing in on three quarters here. Ooh. Damage for a rare relic versus common relic start. I think common relic start's pretty good on silent, and something I'm reasonably happy to have. This act layout looks a little bit more problematic, and we of course have the myth, the legend, the slime boss waiting for us at the end of the act. Slime boss versus silent is always a difficult matchup. Never does it go particularly well for poor silent. And so every little advantage that we can get will help with that. So of our starting options, I think transforming a card can be quite good. I would probably transform a strike, although losing a little bit of early damage can be nasty. Common Relic is, is consistently nice and good for Silent. I would be very, very happy with a Common Relic. I could take a Rare Relic for damage, although I really, really advise, especially on Silent, against taking a damage start going into Slime Boss. You're going to need every hit point you can get. So although we could get a really good rare without knowing exactly what it is, it's not worth it. If I was going under Speed Timber rules, this might be a boss swap here. Boss swap, and if I get something I like, keep the run, otherwise reset. Might also be worth it to play the first few floors just to see what the early card rewards are. But in terms of just winning this run, in terms of our... What is our best play right here, right now? And let's let's ignore anything about Speed Timber and focus on how do we win this silent run? I'm personally leaning very strongly towards Common Relic here. I think it's the least risky. All all three transform a card, take 15 damage, lose our starting relic for a boss relic. These could all have a, a pretty bad outcome for us if the exact roll isn't good, if we don't get a useful relic, if we don't get a useful card. The left path, huh? Maybe, maybe if I get a preserved insect. Um, all of these have a chance of disaster in an act that's already pretty tough for Silent. Silent has a very difficult act one, and anything that makes it more difficult is not something we want. I'm going to take a common relic here. And we'll get a nunchaku. Every time we play 10 attacks, gain an energy. That's actually a very useful relic. Not the most useful of the common relics, but definitely a positive for us. Something that's going to help, something that we can manipulate. Uh, in particular, here on the silent, what we're going to want to do is have Nunchaku as close to nine as possible when we end our combats, so that we get bonus energy on turn one when we play our first attack. It also encourages us to take attack spam type cards, and that that is also true of Slime Boss. I, I'll tell you now, chat, these are the circumstances, the only circumstances under which I advocate for the card Infinite Blades. Uh, silent against Slime Boss, and we already have a relic that would make it pretty decent. So, pathing-wise, there's a couple of options. Marked in red here, left path. It's an elite before the first fire. I'm always a little scared about that, although stopping at a shop first does make it less risky. Followed by a fire elite. There's no way to get out of the series of challenging fights here. And with Slime Boss at the end, I think this red path is most likely to lead to disaster, unless the card rewards come out really well and there's good potions. I realistically don't see this, this happening. Path that I'm more likely to want to take. We definitely want to take some combats right away. Combats are going to be a little bit easier because we have a relic that helps us out. Um, and then we can decide whether we want to go to a shop or not. I'm thinking we go shop, prepare for the elite. Upgrade at the rest site, face the elite with the upgrade and what we purchase at the shop. And if the rewards are good enough, we can go for another elite. And if they're not, we don't have to. There's also the option to avoid this elite entirely if we really get completely stumped on the first few card rewards and go this way, path around that first shop into this second shop or even not into a shop at all. Actually, no, to, to avoid shop entirely does mean hitting an elite. I definitely want to take combats in these first few fights. It's, before we go to the shop, it's really essential to know whether we have potions or not. That tells me whether I need to purchase potions. 
or whether I can avoid doing that and spend my money on cards or something else. Going to a question mark before the shop, it's true there's a chance that we could gain money there. We could also end up losing money at the question mark. Uh, so I'd really like to avoid it. I think we're definitely better off going three combats immediately here than we would be visiting an event. At least for now. It means we won't get a lot of events this act, but that does mean a lot of guaranteed income from combats. Um... And guaranteed card rewards. Alright, that's a bit of an awkward draw against the Jawworm, but at least we don't take any damage here. Jawworm as the first opponent is a little tricky, but I think the Nunchaku will end up helping us out in this fight. Okay, strike draws were good here, though. Hacking me for 12, and actually a great draw. We go Neutralize, Strike, Strike, Survivor, take one. Dish out nine to this worm. Perish, foul worm. Yeah, we'll never kill next turn if I don't play this strike. Of course, if I draw three strikes here, I would kill. Instead, we should block three times. There's no point in playing this strike. Triple defend. Next turn, we'll have a bonus energy with the Nunchaku. Unfortunately, that energy doesn't help me at all. Need to play the strike. Uh, hopefully we don't draw three defense. Although three defense neutralized, we wouldn't take much damage. Oh, gosh. Jawworm, you are such a rude. Very well. That's the worst possible draw in that moment. Jawworm nabs us again. Although not nearly as bad as that one time. We do get a potion, a weakness potion. And we do get a damage card, notably a damage card that hits all enemies. Dagger Spray is not exactly my favorite option for hitting all foes, but it's the A, the only attack card we're being offered at the moment, and B, it is de definitely necessary preparation for Slime Boss. Also a pretty good upgrade, too. I think that's an easy choice. That'll set us up better for the later fights this act, too, particularly these nerds. Since I have a Dagger Spray, I'm deeply tempted to simply defend three times here. To defend, defend, survivor. Take zero this turn. Otherwise, I have to take quite a bit, right? We take three strikes to kill the Gray Slime. If this was a 12 health one, we could go strike, strike, survivor, but we can't. So I'm just going to block. And we get to the... Dagger Spray. It's all of our life. Don't take too much. Trinto says, Is there a draw order so bad that you could die to Jawworm? I believe it's theoretically possible with just the starting deck. And if you add even w just one curse, one doubt curse especially, from, let's say, a bad starting bonus, and it is possible to draw badly enough to, draw, to outright die to the Jawworm. Yes. Here we go. Then check on nine. Totally is possible. We get two potions, although they're definitely not my favorite potions. We also find a Blade Dance. Add three shivs to our hand. I think that's an excellent card since we have the Nunchaku and an excellent start to the deck overall. Slice is also fairly reasonable for the same reason. It's less overall damage, but cheaper less card plays, which can matter for the later game. I think we'd probably want this Blade Dance for now. It makes upgrading the Blade Dance even better, because it makes it easier for it to refund the energy, too. So that'll be a good upgrade, although I think Dagger Spray is still our first priority. After we see the results of this combat, we'll determine... Get him. Not quite a full block without the last defend. Might as well do the, the full blocking here. We'll determine whether we want to go to the shop. Here. 
Um, two hits kills either way. All right. Just trying to figure out if I could increment Nunchaku by one somehow, but the answer is no. We'll leave with it at four for this fight. You got 13 bucks and I'm thinking Endless Agony personally. Endless Agony is a great early pickup for Silent. Zero cost card that duplicates itself when you draw it and does reasonable damage. I also like that Endless Agony once played exhausts, so you don't have to draw it over and over and over again just once in the shorter fights. Extraction and Tactician definitely aren't it when it comes to early game Silent cards. You really need to get a foundation of damage in order to be able to tackle elite combats. So, looking at our path here, I have to go through the shop if I want to... ...base this elite with a rest site first. We did get two potions, but they're not very good potions, so I would very happily replace the ancient potion with something. There are numerous... Powers that I would be very happy to purchase. The sad thing is that we can't afford a relic, which makes going to the shop a lot less enticing, but I think we still want to go there. I'm actually pretty unimpressed with the offerings here. But I do see one card that I really want. It's not the Infinite Blades, although I did name this one as a card I would take. If the Infinite Blades was on sale, I might be considering it here. Um, the card I'm much more... If I was to buy a card right now, and I think I will, it's this card. Dash. 10 block, 10 damage for one attack. An attack card that blocks, crucially. Further interaction with the nunchaku, as well as a, a high base value card that's going to be very effective in, in all of the elites of Act 1. Does that leave me a... I could also buy the second dagger spray, which is... And that's the only thing I can buy. I can't even buy a potion in additions. Regimeta says, do I usually pick dash later in the run? Very rarely. I tend to find that dash starts to be irrelevant in Act 3. It's, it's nice block, but it's too costly energy-wise. And... Doesn't scale well enough with dexterity. So it usually is worse than playing two defense separately, because you no longer care about the 10 damage. That said, dash can be relevant if you can make it free with madness, for example, or if you are duplicating it via Necronomicon, or if there's a few other ways to make it relevant late game. Good with Sneko Eye as well. So do I want a second dagger spray? It might be flooding the deck a little bit, but honestly, I'm rather inclined to say that I do. Double Dagger Spray is... I mean, one Dagger Spray really doesn't do that much damage. Even upgraded, it's only 12. So having more than one really seems like an effective answer to those multi-enemy fights that we're going to struggle with. And that'll give us a really solid foundation upon which we can start to focus more on removals afterwards. Uh, and maybe not so adding so many cards. We can also focus on adding card draw. Cards like backflip, cards like acrobatics, calculated gamble. Powers like footwork or well-laid plans. All right, now I'm feeling quite ready for this elite. We have a, a very good deck of cards. We should be able to thrash whom or whatever that is without too much health loss. And I'm already starting to feel good about the slime boss fight as well. Ideally, for the slime boss, we'll have two upgraded dagger sprays. Um, I do think I'll want to upgrade at least one dagger spray first before blade dance. Maybe both dagger sprays before blade dance. Doom stress. Thanks for 27 months of keeping it cozy. Heck yeah. Aha! And then we're offered gold for hit points with no guaranteed shop. And this, I mean, this would have been nice to have before the shop. It's true, but. Those 11 hit points are pretty valuable to me. And as much as I don't like losing 100 gold later, I really like keeping the health right now. Oop. Excuse me. Did not mean to open the console there. 
Yeah, we also lose relatively little gold comparatively, since we only have 26 left. I don't mind losing the last of it here. Definitely makes me happy that I... Spent most of my money at the shop. All right. Hopefully I upgraded the correct dagger spray. First opponent is this nerd. Not my favorite here. I'm not gonna play strike dagger spray plus here. We want this dash to be cycled in later. Lagavulin's definitely a, a bit of a difficult opponent for us. However, The Nunchaku is going to help a bit. Actually, hmm. And is the weak potion is also going to help a bit. Oh, didn't draw the Blade Dance. Actually, that's good. That's good. I think I'm going to let these Endless Agonies cycle then. I'm just going to play the Strike. We're going to leave these to both duplicate. The Ascender's Bane will exhaust, and this Nerd will awaken. It means we haven't started with a whole lot of damage, but we've got a lot of damage potential now. It's gonna have to do. The Ancient Potion can block the first Dexterity down, but we need to do as much damage as possible prior to that. So we really can't afford to short ourselves much damage, if any. Gotta play all of these Agonies, all of these strikes. Every strike must be played. Shame we didn't draw the dash. I don't think this Ancient Potion is going to save much health. It could make a big difference against a Grumlin Knob. Honestly, I think we're not going to be fighting another Elite based on how this has gone. Keep this potion. Yeah, I didn't think the difference to Dexterity would make much of a difference. Hopefully we will get to live. 20. So, Dash is going to do 8. Dagger Spray will also do 8. Blade Dance does 6. Strikes do 4. So it's impossible to kill next turn? Is that what I'm getting? It's outright impossible to kill it next turn, so we might as well get the three block. Because uh, even if we bring it to 20 health, my best damage draw is going to be what? 6 plus 8 plus 4. This would be on 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, technically, if I play the Strike, I can kill with Strike, Blade Dance, Dagger Spray, Strike. That's a pretty dang unlikely draw, though. In all of the situations, the 3 health so that I can maybe survive seems better. Or Dash and Blade Dance. Or maybe Dash, Dagger Spray, and a Strike? No, that won't be enough. Right? Because this would be 8 plus... I can't get the Nunchaku if I just if I just dash Dagger Spray. It would have to be Dash Blade Dance. No, I'll take the three. Hopefully I'm not dead here. Oh good, we're not dead. However, I did get one of the draws that I think might have saved me. That's funny. Uh, let's see here. So again, six plus eight damage, not enough. This goes to... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I can't activate the Nunchaku this turn. So I think this is dash, and I probably need to Blade Dance over saving three so that we do enough damage to actually kill here. Again, the Survivor unfortunately not lining up here. So, it's been a pretty grim start to this silent run, I have to say. Down to a mere six health here is pretty tough. But we do get a Singing Bowl, so we can skip future card rewards to gain max health, which is definitely going to help us in the short term, as well as the long term. 
What I don't think I'm gonna do is fight another elite, but what I do think I'm gonna do is maybe upgrade one more card and rest one more time this act. Okay. And that actually helps reward us for having bought so many cards early on, too. Because we don't need to necessarily add more, we can now get rewarded for not taking. So let's go to 8 health. First of all, that's going to give me better odds of surviving the next fight. I would like to continue along the green path here. We might even get a heal from this event that could maybe let me take another elite here. Don't think Crippling Cloud, nor Sneaky Strike, nor even Expertise are particularly good. <laughs> As you walk into the room, you hear a gurgling and grinding of metals. Before you is a slime-like creature that ate too much scrap for its own good. Twenty-five percent chance to get a relic in one click. Currently at eight health, and I've got at least two fights between me and the next rest site. I'm gonna go with no thanks. Just gonna completely pass on this event today. No, thank you. All right, we have a build. Short-term survival is now the primary motivating factor here. With Shuriken, our damage can scale up rather enormously. This deck is perfectly built to exploit this thing already. So I think my main focus here is just Survive Act 1. That is the current priority above all else. That means getting here as quickly as we can. We're going to need slightly favorable draws, but thankfully the deck is well equipped to handle whatever the hard pool throws at us, for the most part. Good luck. Another option is take the event now. And hope that it's a heal. This puts us a little further away from the fire. This could be a third combat, is the problem. There's no way to know. It could also be a shop, which would be completely useless. I'm gonna take the combats. This is a tough one. Oh dear. Uh, tell me I'm not immediately dead. Let's see, we can do three, four, four, five. Ten. 14. Math time. Fortunately, that's 40 damage, so that'll split this thing in half. Problem is, the resulting slimes will have 31 health. Good news is, we'll have two strengths. But uh, it's really going to be all up to what they do separately. Don't have a lot of options here. There's no way to block this turn, so we have to go all out offensive. Make sure the dagger sprays are last to benefit from the shuriken more. Oh good, we're still alive. And how? We want to put our damage into the one that's weakening us here. Uh, we do 6, 6, 12, 24 damage. That leaves it on 7. Which is just too much for one strike to kill. I always draw a minimum of 3 strikes and 1 block next turn. So I can always strike, strike, defend. It means maximum I take next turn is 3. And that doesn't change whether I use the Ancient Potion or not. So there's no reason to use the Ancient Potion. Slime can't attack for 12, two turns in a row here. Oh, I've also got the Nunchaku. Perfect. Four strength. Okay, 
Um, we want to just do this with three attacks. I could block. I don't think it's a wise choice, though. You die in two hits. That's fine. All right, we get money and could take another cheap attack to help uh, with the all-out attack combo synergy going on. Slice would actually help a little bit, or I could take two more hit points. Really glad we got through that. I also want to take max health because I plan on resting soon, and if I have more max health, I'm going to get more health out of the rest. So I'll take some more health, and we're going to take this green combat. If I knew this was the three sentries, I might. We're almost well set up for Gremlin Knob. We would realistically need... Um... 8 plus 16, 24 health, 25 health to be okay against a Gremlin Knob. And actually, exactly 10 health against three sentries is super scary too, but with the double dagger sprays, I don't think it'd be too bad. That said, I don't think it's worth the risk. I think we have all the relics we need and even all the cards we need for Slime Boss. All we need now is more hit points, maybe a better potion. Let's take what should be, and it definitely is, the easier fight. These two are amongst the easiest of the Act 2 hard pull. We've even got a potion that could help me as well. They can attack for up to two turns in a row or alternate with a strength buff. So this one will never attack me next turn. That means we want to focus our damage here. We can also just kill the front one. And I know I'm drawing lethal next turn, so yeah, let's just do that. Be too many attacks played, though. Unless I make a dagger spray plus. I'm thinking about leaving with Nunchaku on a higher number here. We're not guaranteed to see the dagger spray. Still, this is fine. We did see the dagger spray. Perfect. That means I can do this. We get a potion, a useful potion at that, and a backstab, which is certainly a card I'm going to click on here. Backstab is a zero cost deal 11 damage attack that is always going to appear on turn one, furthering our front loaded damage output, as well as allowing us to more likely activate the shuriken on turn one. Imaginary friend, thanks for 27 months. I'm doing just fine today, although uh, off to a little bit of a shaky start on this silent run. Yeah, I think leaning heavily into the attacks, now that we, now that we have both Shuriken and Nunchaku, uh, attacks are far more encouraged than poison, for sure. Okay, and we made it to the fire, so we can rest now. I'm gonna do that, yeah. There's... There's some theoretical argument for delaying the rest, but I'm, I'm scared, so I'm not gonna do... Yeah, exactly. You stinkies. Hello, stinkies. This is a nasty encounter, too. Green slime is aggressive. The cultist is just going to get stronger and stronger. So this is really a damage race. Fortunately, we're well equipped to win a damage race. Let's put the single target damage on the cultist and expect the dagger sprays to help with the acid slime. Killing the cultist quickly is pretty essential here. I could even put all the damage on the cultist. Let's do it. Since I don't need the weaken. Put them both 32 here. Maybe that's wrong. We'll find out momentarily. Dash survivor is a full block. I'll take it. Any other line to consider here? I don't think so. Now, uh, if we'd lowered this one south, we could have done strike, strike, survivor instead. But eh, this will work out just fine. Only drew one dagger spray, alas. And no block here. The question is, can we kill them both? I can play every card in my hand thanks to the Nunchaku, so I think the answer is yes. I can kill them both, even without drawing the dagger spray plus. 
So this is going to do 12 to all. So I want to bring this one below 12. As efficiently as possible. I think that's two shivs. Or... 14? Oh yeah, because I can get two shuriken procs before I uh, use it. Yes. 14 to all. So I should have actually used the strike there. I think we're still good, though. Just shiv you one more time, then agony, agony, shiv. Heck, I almost could have done this with uh, Nunchaku on 9. So I get an energy back. Ideally, I actually want to play the strike first. So that we have end with Nunchaku on 1 rather than 0. Although it's really spooky to do so. Almost didn't trust me there. Double backstab. I think two backstabs is, is very reasonable in this deck. I really like that they exhaust. Could take a masterful stab instead, which doesn't exhaust, but does increase in cost as we take damage. The frontest of loads, that's right. If you've never tried double backstab on Silent, I highly recommend it. It's even better with Shuriken. Hopefully we can get Bag of Marbles or Terror soon to really ramp up the damage. And I also like Liquid Memories. We'll take that over the Ancient Potion, letting me get any one card from the discard pile. I think we're in perfect shape now. I'm no longer worried at all about Slime Boss. So I think we're in good shape to take an event. And then upgrade. But I... Arantin Lad says, would I take Infinite Blades with this build? No longer. I would have taken Infinite Blades if I still felt like we needed help against the Slime Boss, but I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like we're probably going to dominate Slime Boss. Which event would I be hoping for? I would like Remove Transform Upgrade. I would like Dead Adventurer. I would like... Upgrade Shrine or Removal Shrine. I would like... A heal still, quite frankly. I would take a heal from Cleric or remove from Cleric. I would take a... A donut heal. I would even remove a card at a shop. Would I take a third backstab at this point for the free one strength? I think we're almost guaranteed to draw some other attack. So I'm not particularly a feeling obliged to do that. Yeah, we do get Cleric. Heal for 35 gold or pay 75, get a removal here. I think this would be a decent time to remove a card. Get rid of one strike, maybe one defend? Let's do one strike. And then here we can either upgrade Blade Dance or the other Dagger Spray. I think both are very reasonable. Going into Act 2, I feel like double upgraded Dagger Spray is going to be super worth it. Although the opportunity for additional Shuriken procs from the upgraded Blade Dance is deeply, deeply tempting. That way, if I draw Blade Dance on turn 1, I get guaranteed 2 points of strength. Or if I draw it alongside Endless Agony, I get guaranteed 2 points of strength. That feels too important. It's also now a better Liquid Memories target. 31 health should be plenty to survive. Yeah, look at this. All the strength. Let's see if we end up wanting to keep one of these. Ninety-eight minus 13, 80 f something. I get two turns to weaken you. Hmm. I'm going to leave that backstab there. In case we want to draw into it again. Yeah, because I, I figured we might want to do a reasonable amount of damage this turn. Get another point of strength here. Draw back into that backstab later on. 81. Three strength. Now, we could use the Liquid Memories here. I can see that this isn't a particularly good split, as it is. Or we could simply play ball. 
got Dagger Spray with three points of strength and still Liquid Memories next turn, so I imagine worst case scenario, if I feel the need next turn, we Liquid Memories the Dagger Spray and re-split both slimes again. Rather than Liquid Memories now. 59's not too bad, and remember, with uh, three points of strength, this will do 14 to all. We can do that twice, so 28 to all, which will cleave them in two. And that's only if necessary. And I think we get to Dagger Spray Dash here and say it's not necessary. At least not immediately. Going to weaken the Gray Slime, as that's the one that's guaranteed to attack me next turn. We have to split this one. Hey, and look at that card that we saved from earlier. How nice of you to join us again. Alright, sure feeling like Liquid Memories might really help me right now. We're so close to putting an end to this, though. Let's see, strike, strike, backstab, deals, 9, 9, 14. That's 18, 14. That's exactly 32, so we can perfectly kill you. Block for 6, take 12. All right, I'll do that. Perfection. Alright, that means we get to keep the current potions. More importantly, keep this liquid memories. Oh, man. And the rewards on Docket are impressive. Glass Knife is a heckin' strong front-loaded attack with a shuriken on board. There's also Phantasmal Killer, letting us double our attack damage on a subsequent turn. That, too, is mighty. Storm of Steel could be a source of strength as well, although we lack the ability to get the cards in hand that it would really want. Phantasmal Killer doesn't work very well with backstabs, notably, but it is amazing with all the other attacks we have, especially the dagger sprays. Henry BK, thanks for 21 months. I'm thinking Phantasmal, personally. Bailey calling Wrist Blade as our boss relic? I'd be happy with that. You really happy with a Wrist Blade? Relic-wise, I have I have no idea what we could take here. We're, we're in a position where we can take almost anything, barring a hovering kite. Pyramid would be great. Astrolabe or Pandora's box or even Empty Cage would be pretty good. Energy relics would, by and large, be quite good. I'm thinking Phantasmal here. We have enough upfront damage that we're already doing okay against the enemies of Act 2. And I really don't want to invest an upgrade into this glass knife. Like a phantasmal. Keep these current potions. Oh ho! Tripper, star, or bell. Man. This feels like a black star situation to me. This deck slaps. At least the elites of Act 2 it does. With double backstab, double dagger spray. And, but most importantly, this Liquid Memories potion. We can make very, very short work of the Elites of Act 2. We're pretty good at operating on uh, low energy here. Wouldn't mind being able to rest again, given our ability to get even more max health. Could see an argument for the Calling Bell for the upfront relic gain. We would like the energy from the Coffee Dripper, but I think that we would not always be able to spend it. And I am a little miffed at not being able to rest. I'm very happy with Blackstar here. Blackstar is going to flood us in relics, and that's going to allow us to get um, some more really powerful things going in. This deck is great at short fights, but really lacks any sort of solution to the late game. Drowning in relics would really help with the late game. So I think personally I would take Blackstar over Calling Bell here. Not sure about Dripper versus Black Star. I think we get to take Black Star. 
Yeah, how many of the five ninja relics can we get? I'm hoping we at least see Ornamental Fan. So, our Act 1 boss... Sorry, our second boss is going to be the Collector. Collector could be pretty nasty. Summoning three minions at a time. Well, two minions at a time. Three enemies at a time. Thankfully, the powerful dagger sprays can hopefully help take care of them. But we'll, we'll need to make this fight pretty quick, or we'll perish. How do we feel about the elite placement here? Lack of rest sites is definitely intimidating. There is a four elite path, I see. Maybe you want to make it a three elite or something. Could even opt out of this one, too. Put this in red. Here's the green. We can go this elite here or here. I guess we can do these first two fights before we decide shop or not shop. I'll mark the green here, the red here. Where we can include additional elites along our path while overall having what should be pretty reasonable. But yeah, if we can take four elites and get eight relics, that would definitely be something. Okay, we'll see. We can also opt out of the shop and go this way. Very optionalitous path, I agree. My favorite kind of path to have. All right, already I'm seeing a pretty reasonable potion use case scenario here. Backstab, backstab, dash is all well and good. Get to defend, and if I energy potion, I can defend one more time as well as Phantasmal Killer to double our attack damage next turn, which will make a huge difference. Could also Liquid Memories the dash, but I'd rather save that power for an elite fight. I think it can often be correct to spend a potion in the first combat of Act 2. Usually your deck's not quite up to snuff. I'm gonna target this one. When you come into uh, the beginning of the act, and a potion in, in one of those opening combats, dang it, can really make the difference. That still does kill, though, right? Yeah. Well, everything worked out. Get all of our money back. And another blade dance, which, uh, yeah, I'm going to be taking, right? Yeah, definitely. I don't think we want too many blade dances until we have some kind of way for them to be block positive as well. But I do think we want another blade dance for now, since they refund a third of their price anyway. And do a very tremendous damage. Oof, Shelled Parasite. Fortunately, we drew good block. Actually, no problem here, right? Whosoever had a problem against the Shell Parasite in this act. So I can defend twice, or I can play Blade Dance, remove three points of plated armor, deal quite a lot of damage, and get another point of strength. We're going to need to finish the fight by killing this thing pretty quickly, so I'm thinking shorting myself one defend might actually be the correct play here. Or again, Liquid Memories, but with an empty potion slot, I have no incentive to do that. going to go a lot better for us if we can kill this thing. Please die. Goodbye and thank you. Oh, so close. My hit points. I guess I should have played the defend after all. Looks like it's... curses. We do ever get a useful potion as well as a third blade dance or a calculated gamble. And I'm currently eyeing the calculated gamble, letting us discard our hand to draw that many cards anew. This will be our first added 
draw consistency effect, something we're currently desperately lacking. Or two hit points, but I, I think the gamble is definitely gonna be, going to be better than two hit points. I think I will pass through the shop too, get another card removed. I want the option to go to this store. Insect sure would have been nice. If only I had taken... I think if I had taken the damage from the event, we would have died, though, right? Hmm. Oh, well laid plans. Or finisher. Finisher is actually pretty hyped, too. I think well laid plans to make Phantasmal Killer uh, line up is, is the most important thing here by far. At the end of your turn, retain up to one card. Finisher do go burr. Problem is, if you can't consistently draw the finisher at the right time, it's not going to do nothing for you. Not a thing. And that, my friends, pretty sad. Oh, dash. Hmm. 21 health to, uh, to do this? I don't think so. As much as I might like doubling dashes here. You have to pay a lot of health to get this book relic. There's three different possibilities, each of which are good in their own right. But I'm kind of scared. I could rest at the next rest site. Wouldn't even like Necronomicon that much is the problem. I'm going to say no. We'll do the last of the combats before us. That's a good opening draw at least. Cult has got to go first. Turn could be a little difficult. Just a nine by two, okay. That's not too bad. And yet we're a long way from killing this thing. Makes me worry. more days in the draw pile. Chosen still has a lot of health. Kind of need Chosen to not attack me next turn. Otherwise, this is going to be really nasty. Playing Phantasmal Killer can't be worth it. Hmm. So do I use the Dex Potion to save four now and probably more on a future turn? Yeah, I will. That's not too bad. Didn't get attacked, the vulnerable wore off. We have dash defend this turn, which is not too, too bad. Block for 19, take five more. And I really want to be able to upgrade Phantasmal Killer. I don't think we can get to, at least not yet. Play Dance does more damage than Dagger Spray, but it adds a daze to the draw pile. I'm gonna keep the Dagger Spray. One, so we strike, then dagger spray. Yes. Spooky. We do get a potion back. And we get a card reward that I'm not particularly fond of, so I'm pretty happy to take max health here. 
All right, I don't think we're in a position to fight this elite. I don't even think we're in a position to upgrade our Phantasmal Killer. I'd rather rest to make sure we have enough health to get through the next couple of elite fights intact. Not much interested in poison here with our shuriken. Let's see, we get 21 health again. Got it. And maybe a useful relic coming out of the chest soon? A long line of hooded figures offer me a ritual dagger. Ritual dagger can be quite powerful. Permanently, scale permanently scaling up in damage each time it kills a foe. And we have a well laid plans. And I just rested for health. Actually, I rather like it. A well-powered Ritual Dagger can can be a seriously useful thing later on, and, and even right now, it's a 15 damage attack, which is not to be ignored at all in the current situation. So I think this is a yes. I may not be able to upgrade it anytime soon, but we can scale this up to reasonable damage values pretty quickly. Let's do it. Let's do it. Give to Junk and ACOG, what do you call a bunch of crows flocking together? A murder in progress. Give me that knife. All right, let's... It's time to test our fate. We've prepared ourselves basically as much as we can. It's time to try to get some serious rewards here. So we're going to go headlong into our first elite fight. Armed to the teeth. Got good potions. We have a very aggressive deck. It's going to have to be enough, hopefully. Our first opponent, the Book of Stabbing, is not exactly who I wanted to see. However, I'm thrilled with his turn one. Could even end up just using Liquid Memory's Blade Dance next turn or something. Although we'll save that for... Later. Definitely, definitely better to do damage here. Book of Stabbing is very much a damage race. We need to kill this thing as quickly as we can. And so playing Survivor, blocking 8 out of 10, and playing Dagger Spray for another 16 damage, pretty much mandatory here. Since I wouldn't even be able to use the additional energy, I'm not going to use Liquid Memories this turn. Maybe next turn. Or maybe never. Don't think this is our best matchup of the three elites, but it's definitely going to have to do. Yeah, here's the turn that's a bit of a problem. I could use the Gambler's Brew, try to get the dash. I could Liquid Memories, the Survivor, or the Neutralize, but ultimately it's pretty hard to not take a whole bunch of damage here. Even with the Liquid Memories on the Blade Dance, we're not going to be able to um, kill with the Dagger here. So I think we'd rather retain the Dagger. This gets played, this gets played. I think it's better to just take the damage and uh, keep the Liquid Memories and the Ritual Dagger for now. Could also use the Dagger right now. That's another option. Don't scale at this fight. Simply focus on winning this combat, which might be necessary here. Going to be attacked for 24 next turn. It's going to be a toughie as it is. Gonna drop down to critical health. We might have to rest again. It's really gonna depend on what relics we get. Hmm. I think I need to play this now. Because it gives me a shuriken proc and I guess I have the spare energy now. Draw pile indeed looking not so hot. I'd also like the ability to use the calculated gamble without losing the dagger anyway. So I think it's daggering time. And taking 16 time. Yeah, this is where the Gambler's Brew comes in. Certainly this is not the draw we were looking for. Although actually, what if I Liquid Memories the Blade Dance Plus? Does that just win the fight right now? Because I'd be okay with that. I think it does. Because this is already 30 damage with 4 strength. This will do 8 times 4, 32. 30 plus 32 is more than enough. Okay, yeah, so if I Liquid Memories, we win. If I calculate, if I Gambler's Brew, we probably don't manage to do that. So let's use our Liquid Memories now.
Oh ho! What a pair of relics! Holy moly! Wow. Fossilized Helix prevents the first instance of damage each combat, and Bank of Marbles makes enemies vulnerable on turn one, causing them to take additional damage. There's also an accuracy here to make our shivs do more. I'm actually not sure we want that. And an upgraded bouncing flask, which is also tempting, but I think the true answer here is simply to max health. I almost feel like I can take on the Burning Elite right now. Hmm. Is accuracy a trap here? I think so. On three base energy, note that it only improves two of the many, many cards in the deck. And we're already massively improving our damage output with the Shuriken. So I don't think it's necessarily required. And what's in here? A lantern for even more energy on turn one. Don't know that we'll always need that, but I do like that. I like any bit of help I can get. So I'll be picking that up. Is there such a thing as too much scaling? If it comes at the cost of uh, front load, if it comes at the cost of being able to do stuff immediately, yes, there is such a thing as too much scaling. Charlotte and Smalls, thanks for four months of support. So do we have enough to take on the Burning Elite? With Helix preventing the first instance of damage, with a Gambler's Brew Potion, and with our new set of Relics here, I think we have very, very good odds. So what I like most about the Burning Elite right now is that this is guaranteed to not be Super Book of Stabbing, particularly Plus Health Book of Stabbing. Although Plus Health Slavers would be pretty nasty too. I think we can quite frankly just murder the Slavers so quickly that they really don't get a chance to react, thanks to the double dagger sprays and our huge damage output. And if we get something like Regenerating or Metallicize Slavers or Gremlin Leader, it'll just be basically a free green key, leaving us free to get more relics in Act 3. I think we have very, very good odds in this fight. Let's do it. It is Metallicizing Slavers. Happy to see them. Alright, the buffer won't quite protect us here. Let's see, is this a Gambler's Brew situation? If I were to gamble, it would be a Cinder's Bane, Defend, Strike, and Neutralize. What is our current damage? And is rounding relevant? Yes, we want to Blade Dance first. 6-6-6, 18-18. It's 18 times 3, 54 damage. Yes, we already killed the, blue, the Red Slaver with the Blade Dance Backstab Backstab which means that the remaining four cards are just kind of doing whatever. So I think that's a pretty good use for the Gambler's Brew, then, if we want to make sure this goes really smoothly here. What's our current potion chance? What? Make the eight less than a defend. Unfortunately, neutralize only brings this, this down to six, so we cannot do that. There's no way to meaningfully use, really, the Defend or the Neutralize, which is why I'm considering gambling them away, and that's what I'm going to do. Giving us a bit more to work with. There we go, Ritual Dagger and the other Blade Dance. Now we think we can kill two of them on turn one. And take zero damage here. Kill the blue, neutralize the Taskmaster, take zero damage. Oh, you know, that's actually a reasonable line. Leave the Red Slaver alive as the last remaining one. That's not the worst idea in the world. How air? We're beyond that now. This does 24. Five. 
This way I even get to keep the buffer, though. Maybe that was overkill. I don't think so. It's just Phantasmal this turn. Use the buffer, keep the dash. All right, we get a question card. Future card rewards have one additional card to choose from. Pocket Watch, whenever we play three or fewer cards during our turn, draw three additional cards at the start of the next turn. This is the Emerald Key, a Duplication Potion, and if we want a Blade Dance or another Acro. Another Blade Dance or an Acro, rather. Pocket Watch that we'll probably never use. You might be surprised. I think there will definitely be situations where we get to use the Pocket Watch. Very happy to see it overall. I'm also very happy to see Question Card. What about Skewer for all that strength? Man, if we picked up Necronomicon, Skewer would be pretty juicy. And I could rest one more time. I don't need to rest yet. We can upgrade Phantasmal, I think. We just slew the heck out of that Burning Elite. And boy, am I proud of us. But what about an Acrobatics? Especially if I upgrade Phantasmal. That's going to get more and more important. Thinking we really want to start picking up card draw. Although it's not upgraded card draw. Maybe I just take more health for the moment here. Don't yet have the additional draw. We have Pocket Watch too. You know what? I'm just going to take Max Health. We'll pick up that two pot as well. Hmm. So I feel like we're in a pretty commanding position now. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade Phantasmal Killer, and I we're going to try to do this without taking any damage. I think we can manage. I'd like to replenish our potion resource here. Upgrading Ritual Dagger would also be a reasonable idea. I th I'm going to try to go through without an upgraded Ritual Dagger, but maybe that was correct. I'm hoping we have the chutzpah to do this correctly. Let's see. Hmm. Ignore the Blade Dance. And I don't waste Nunchaku, I also get to do Pocket Watch. Let's do Pocket Watch. Pretend like we have a real Sneko Eye. Draw eight cards per turn, but with random cost. Feels pretty good, actually. And I have three energy left. I might as well go all out of here. We'll play the Blade Dance Plus. I've got buffer for next turn no matter what. Let's do some damage. That's what I call a good turn. Backflip looks a bit more appealing. Let's card draw and block, although it's not much block. Could still find a way to gain dexterity. I'm also happy taking more max health here, I suppose. If I want to preserve buffer, we're going to need some block cards, though. I'm going to grab this one. Snake plant. The stinky. Stinky snake plants. Is it ever possible to kill? I really doubt it. Best I can block for is 15, unfortunately, one shy of what we would need here, which makes me heavily inclined to use a skill potion. Although I wouldn't call it a particularly good potion. So it's 31. 
Unfortunately, the snake plant gets blocked with each attack we play, so it's not enough to simply do Edisu damage with the attacks in our hand. That is within reason, but the escalating block it gains will be a real problem. Well, check says, do relics like question card or prayer wheel make me more or less likely to pick busted crown? Question card, less likely. Um, singing bull, more likely. I'd be okay with a busted... Eh, well, I don't know if I'd be okay with a busted crown. So, currently looking at taking eight. Skill potion can easily get me out of here. We could also dupe the ritual dagger, but I'd much rather keep the ritual, the duplication potion for one of these fights. Let's use this. Deflect is enough block to buffer the hit, or we can use Blade Dance to deal even more damage this turn. I guess I'll have to do actual math. Gross. I don't think the Blade Dance lets me kill. Question card makes me less likely to pick Crown, that's right. Each card reward is worth more than the last because of the rare card offset and the chance of upgrades. So going from four up four choices to two choices is worse than going from three choices to one choice. I'll take the deflect. That means we don't get to level the dagger here. Still have to play it. Take some damage or gamble and try to make this better by somehow winning. Seems pretty doable. Yeah, that'll do it. And we do get a potion back, too. And we get a terror to let us apply 99 vulnerable to an opponent, so they're vulnerable for the whole fight. Yes. I'll be taking that. All right. Managed to preserve our health resource through to the final lead of the act. It's the Book of Stabbing rematch. Ouch, my buffer. And I have additional energy to spend. So it looks like we play everything except for Ritual Dagger here. Bit of a sad turn, unfortunately. I could try to Pocket Watch, but I don't think it's a good idea this turn. the dagger, though. Son of a gun. All right. Phantasmal Killer, Survivor, Dagger Spray. That's only three cards. Take a lot, but we should be able to kill next turn with the bonus draw. And we'll have to rest before Collector, which is not unexpected. So not playing another card because I want the additional draw next turn. Hmm. We're at triple damage, so shivs will be... Oh yeah, this is plenty of damage. And an incense burner, that could help a lot against Collector. It's also a war paint to upgrade two random skills, a flex potion for temporary strength, 
another chance at accuracy or a reflex here or another dagger spray, but I'm thinking just to gain the max health. I think this flex potion is going to be essential to our victory against the collector here. Calculator Gamble and Survivor get upgraded. Those are great hits. And if this goes to turn six, which I'm hoping it won't, we at least have a bit of an answer. All right, I think I've done myself as good a service as I can going into Collector here. I'm not thrilled with our odds of surviving this fight, and I'm not thrilled with our odds once we get through this fight, if we do. Good luck to us versus Collector here. I'm actually thrilled with this turn one because it means I get to use the pocket watch here. We go backstab, backstab, slight strike. I could even go strike, strike, backstab. Keep one backstab. Do a little bit less damage to Collector up front. And you know, that might be the better option here. We do like five less immediately. Add one backstab to the uh, discard pile. Sure. So don't play the last backstab because we don't want to go over four cards for Pocket Watch here. We would ideally like to use our buffer to block the Collector's attack, not the Minion's attack, and that we can definitely do. Simply backflip and dash will be sufficient. Let's see here. This is not the day, the, uh, this is not the flex potion turn. Hmm. Problem is I can't use the well-laid plans and keep the buffer for the big hit here. Unless I use the duplication potion. Hmm. So I guess we start with a backflip and see what happens. Use neutralize on what? One of the minions here? Mary's dead. Thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Other option, I use the will aid plans and dupe pot. Either backflip or dash. But here we can really, really feel the, the heavy weight of three energy per turn. The thing is, if I bash, uh, dash, backflip, neutralize, or dash, backflip, PK, I get a very interesting turn next turn. I think either way, I backflip first. Okay, no phantasmal. Instead, we drew the blade dance plus. Hmm. Other option would be kill both minions rather than blocking. Could use the flex potion, but I think it'll be much more impactful with. A Phantasmal Killer turn. So I think I just go dash and neutralize here. Do I put the damage onto a torch head? Or do I hit the collector now? I think we should kill at least one of these torch heads. attack at a collector that stings, but here we are.
Trying to figure out how badly I need the uh, pocket watch draw to line up with the phantasmal here. Without um, well-laid plans, it feels kind of important. The burner could help big time, but I think it's going to be a turn too late. Is the problem? We needed to we needed to be the turn after the mega debuff, not two turns after. But maybe if the collector buffs or resummons immediately after the debuff turn, we could be okay. Duplication potion does count against the pocket watch. It's true. What if I do pot the phantasmal killer? Maybe that's the line. Don't need the flex potion to kill one minion, maybe not even both here. Let's see. Five dagger spray, blade dance. Agony, agony. That's one, two, three, four, five. Six attacks, yeah. So we'll get energy back. And Collector never attacks me next turn. So it really is a question of do I need to dupe the Phantasmal or not? Dupe Phantasmal is uh, double damage for the next two turns. So we draw five cards next turn, I play probably three of them. And then we draw eight cards on the following turn. And that's when hopefully the Flex Potion kills. Although the weakness will make that weaker. That's definitely happening. Uh, this is gonna do 12. So we need to bring you below 12. Dagger Spray happens last, of course. Even after the strike, actually, so it'll do more than like 14. So we just need to do 12 to you. Okay. Means I might be able to kill both. and then Dagger Spray. Means I can't block. That's okay. So we're going to take 28 damage, go down to 8 here. The last question before me, do we dupe Phantasmal? 234 health on Collector, 2 draws to kill realistically. I think we should. I'm going to do it. And then Strike kills this nerd next turn as well. It's not playing the Blade Dance. Or if I do, sacrificing a few draws. It is a lot of damage. It's not enough to kill with the Ritual Dagger, certainly. There's enough draws in that draw pile. Also, I might be able to survive with eight draws as well, so I think we must activate Pocket Watch here. Really wish we'd played that well laid plans. Mm -mm. Alright, so this has to be a kill then. Let's hope that it is. I think we're just shy though. See, Dagger Spray Plus is gonna. Well, that's a lot of damage, actually. Is that counting for vulnerable? No. This is 19 twice. This is 15 twice. And this is gonna be four times. Let's do some quick math, just to verify. 
Do we need the flex potion? That's the first important question. Um, okay, we might as well do this, right? There's no reason not to. One, two, three, six other cards. Yes, we can do this. So we can see how much damage this is. 15. So it's 15 times three. And then we go to four strength. This is going to be eight times three. 24 times 0.75, another 18. So 63 plus... How much? I think we have a kill here with the flex potion. I'm just trying to figure out, make sure it's not one without. Um, this would be four strength, so 10 base, 30. So 63 plus 44 plus less than 44. Yeah, we're going to be just shy without the Flex Potion, but with the Flex Potion, the good news is we live. Just barely. And that alone is good enough in my book. GG. Very, very happy with an Alchemize. Do I think it was a misplay using the damage on the Torch Head on the previous turn? Hmm. I don't think so, but maybe. I definitely like Alchemize with no potions currently over to max health. One new potion per combat can be really good, and it's yet another card that can be energy efficient. We're definitely not ready for the late game, at least not ready for the elites of the late game. Giant Head in particular could be a real problem for us, although at least there's Incense Burner and Helix defensively to help keep us in the game here. Really the relics that are carrying us. If it weren't for these, we would be dead already. Well, I guess this hasn't done anything yet, but you get the idea. If it weren't for the Helix, we'd be dead already. I get Sneko, Kite, or Pandora's Box. Yikes. Well, I guess I'm happy with a Pandora's Box here. This will transform all of our Strike and Defend cards, nine cards in total. We're pretty far on behind on card removes so far, turning them into radically different cards, which may or may not be an improvement. That said, these five defends are just dead weight in this deck. So it's hard to imagine a set of cards that's not better than what we have now. We have basically no discard other than the Calculated Gamble, making the Hovering Kite currently pretty weak as a pick. I guess it, we could pick cards to make it better, especially with Question Card. But I don't think it's going to be enough. Nine new cards, though. That could radically change our run in some really good ways. We're going to be struggling with energy. But I'm hoping the Black Star can help us with that. All right, we get a malaise, another blade dance, two finishers. And some relatively useless things. Distraction, skewer, a thousand cuts are pretty unaffordable. Riddle with holes, not so good. Footwork actually barely works on anything, unfortunately, although it is part of a block plan. Overall, our offense got a lot better. And I guess so too did our defense. Malaise is good. Problem is we don't have a lot of energy. All right, maximum of three elites, saith the Spire, and worst, worse than that, we cannot go to a shop and fight elites. Well, and fight three elites. We have to sacrifice at least one elite to visit a shop. So I'm hoping we get a random shop instead. I'm thinking something like this. Tackle two elites early. Reptomancer shouldn't be a problem. Nemesis shouldn't be a problem. Giant Head, hard to say. I think on three energy, this deck's going to be pretty energy hungry. The Nunchaku's nice, but it's not enough on its own to carry us energy generation-wise. 
I don't know. There's a lot, uh, a lot yet to do in this deck. Between here and success. Go this way for the extra event, or what? I'm liking events a lot. I think we're really good at double orb walkers. Um, we'd love to face the mind bloom, although I wouldn't take upgrade all. A slow debuff might make Giant Head comparatively easy for us. That's true. Lantern's going to help out, that's for sure. Oh. Fire Potion, I suppose, is nice and all. The fact that we can get a potion each combat is going to be very, very helpful, if nothing else. Heck. Got dagger anyway. Let's try to level up the dagger in this fight. Also manipulate the incense burner a bit. How much do I want it on five? Let's see. We're fighting either the shapes or an orb walker. And I have a buffer. I don't think it matters that much. We'll take another Calculated Gamble, letting us discard lots of cards to draw new ones. Very important. Yeah, just an Orbwalker. Who's scared of Orbwalkers? <laughs> I wouldn't have even saved the buffer if I was intangible this turn. That's just sad. Could outright kill the Orbwalker right now. No reason to do that yet, though. Got an alchemize and a ritual dagger I'd like to do stuff with. Looks like the dagger's off uh, off the menu here. That's all right. Catalyst. With no poison in the deck, Catalyst not likely to see any use here. I'll just take max health. Up to 80 now. I've already gained 14 from the singing bowl. This run so far. But to lose a card here, thousand cuts be gone. I'm not gonna be able to afford your two energy anyway, so that counts as basically a free removal for us. One less card I have to worry about in the Awakened One fight, too. All right, keep going. And there's the double orb walkers. We've even got intangible on turn one. I will fight and good potions to spend here. If we can win this fight, we'll get a ton of money and another rare relic to add to our collection, which is exceedingly important. I gotta make sure I keep my buffer here. Discard the Calc Gamble. Let's play the distraction. Oh! That's a lot of knives. That is a lot of knives. It's 
So I actually just kill this thing right now. Or I could try to swap out the potion. I'm good with killing it now. Get 53 gold, a mango, 14 max health, doubling the power of the singing bowl. Another liquid memories. And a plans, a fumes, a dodge roll, or a skewer. Already got one plans. We could rather just upgrade the one we have. Not that we're going to have a lot of upgrades, unfortunately. Being really, really healthy is one way to survive the late game, so I've got some encouragement in this regard, but we're still terribly short in late game block options. Still, no upgrade means I think we don't take it. These nerds again. Welcome back, fools. Good luck. It's 45. Fifty. I see. Distraction, distraction, backflip. Classic. This accuracy is upgraded. This expertise is upgraded. Tangible turn four would be good for Giant Head. I think we'll be okay against Reptomancer or Nemesis. So do we take the accuracy? I have three blade dances now. We're gonna need to make every card count. And it's green. I'm gonna take that one. And we're gonna go for combats over events, uh, over uh, elites rather, over uh, rest sites because we wanna leverage this black star to get even stronger here. Good luck to us. First elite is Reptomancer. Definitely not who I wanted to see turn one, but we can at least kill these daggers, get our footwork in play, and do some damage. Thankfully, we have liquid memories to save us in the event that something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Something like this. This is bad. Although, what's the alternative, right? Hmm. So each of these does six. Three sevens will kill. Six, 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 seven, seven, seven. I'd have to use Terror to kill one of the daggers, or take another 9. Could also Blade Dance and then Calculated Gamble, drawing a whole host of new cards. Although, not many of them are actually that helpful here, I'll note. And I have two Liquid Memories, and I would be happy to use one, also of note. Although I can't block for 16, so why would I bother? Is there a way to take just 16? Yes, definitely. We can kill both daggers without even that much thought. It could also take just 25. Put some damage into Reptomancer, leave one dagger alive. Although, with Intangible on four, hmm, really hasn't worked out, unfortunately. This was certainly the turn we wanted to be Intangible for, alas. I guess I could use both Liquid Memories and take zero. And yeah, I agree with Liquid Memories and the Calculated Gamble. We can also do stuff like Gamble the Blade Dance back. But realistically, just blocking for 16 is kind of out of reach. I think I should use one of these potions in this fight, though, because of... The Alchemize, which we've yet to draw. Good news is, yes, we have lots of health. No need to panic.
All right, I think I'll liquid memory is the blade dance then. Here I can keep playing or now I can gamble. Now let's gamble, because finishers would be, like, super spicy now. Gamble again, or backflip first? Let's gamble again. Malaise saves me some health here, actually. Go well aid plans malaise. Take less than 16. Take only 11. This is a summon turn, so here we can easily just play three cards. One of them's going to be Alchemize. Oof. Guess I'll keep the Blade Dance. And the Dagger Spray Plus. Oof. Which means it's what? Finisher, Finisher? Gross. We're intangible next turn, though. It's no problem. Could also play the Distraction. Keep the Blade Dance or the Dagger Spray, not both. I'm not going to use that here. Let's just go finisher, finisher. Summoning again, how rude. Kill them both. It's still fine. Exceedingly likely to kill if I can draw eight next turn. Take one here. Forty two damage shivs. Hundred and eleven damage ritual dagger. Her blammo. All right, we made it through the Reptomancer fight without too much trouble. We get a Dream Catcher. Whenever we rest, we can add a card to the deck. And the all-important Ornamental Fan. This is one of the ones we were looking for. If we get three attacks played in one turn, we'll gain four block. That's huge. Don't think I want another Backstab, nor do I want an Envenom. Could still consider Acrobatics, though. Choke's just too expensive at two costs. That's why we're not taking Invenom either. I'll take none of the above. Maybe I should be taking these unupgraded acrobatics, but I can't upgrade them. I don't like them much. And I'll keep the regen potion over the weak potion. Upgrade a card. Oh boy. Oh man, what a blessing. Let's get well-aid plans upgraded. I've been really bemoaning the lack of an upgrade on this. That's a really fortuitous additional upgrade that we wouldn't have had otherwise. And it's going to make it a lot easier for us to succeed from here. Incense Burner is on the correct number for this fight. And thanks to the power of Ornamental Fan, I get to keep my buffer here. Finisher goes Burr. So blam. I guess Giant Head's not too much of a problem after all, huh? Easy peasy. More like giant dead. I want to bring the giant head to a tiny fraction of health this turn, although I could kill. Um, I would like to gain the rest of the hit points in the regen potion. And such. It's 
So even though Finisher does 32 times 4, Ritual Lager does 140, I don't want to kill it yet. We could keep Burner at 5, so that we're turn 1 intangible here. Do I care about that? Probably not. I care about incense going into this fight. I care about incense going into this fight. Not like we're losing the ritual dagger anyway. Just for three jaw worms. I guess that's true enough. All right. Akabeko! First attack each combat does more damage, sure. Juzu Bracelet ensures no combat here. Uh, although it could be Mind Bloom still, which would be nice. Guess we'll pick it up. I am relatively happy with the tools the tray. It's sort of our turn, draw one card, discard one card. Help us dig through the deck a little bit more effectively, find the cards that we need. Maybe too many powers, though. How many powers are we at? One, two, three. This would be number four. Hmm. Don't like it much, but we'll take it. This could also be a shop still. Gotta take the blue key here over the regal pillow. I'm very happy with that trade. I don't plan on resting ever again. I'm going to recall here so that I have the most upgrade options of the remaining fires. It is not. We did avoid a combat, and we got an event that's bad, so the Juzu Bracelet has actively hurt me here. It would have been better to leave it on the ground. Dang it, Juzu Bracelet. Classic. I think energy upgrades are the best ones we can get. Alchemize upgraded, Malaise upgraded, Tools the Trade upgraded. I really value the Malaise upgrade in particular. For fights like the Awakened One. Let's do that. I think it was correct to go to more stores. I guess we'll never know. It'd be pretty hard to block the Spiker, huh? Maybe I just uh, use the Intangible right now. To do it. I've got Akabeko. Take two if I skewer. I'll take one actually, technically. Is not giant head. I'd prefer intangible turn two if possible. That doesn't seem like it's going to be possible. Maybe I actually wanted to keep that for heart. Oh well. First copy of Piercing Whale that we're offered. I'll be taking that to sap strength from enemies for one turn. Okay, our last elite fight. This will put us over 500 gold and give us two more relics. Hopefully we won't take too much damage to this elite fight. It's the Nemesis. We're not being attacked turn one. We've got an all offense draw, so I'm just going to go all in here. Do as much damage as possible. Which turns out to be really quite a lot of damage. Almost so much so that Liquid Memories could outright kill here, but... Got buffer. We're safe. We're safe. Safe-ish, anyway. Alright, no Ritual Dagger for us in this fight. That's fine. It's definitely not been the world's most diligently leveled dagger. 
but you don't see that stopping me. be away, but it might be bad. Let's take that instead. We get the courier, meaning the merchant will restock themselves and be 20% cheaper, rewarded for hoarding money, get another upgraded piercing whale, or a deflect plus. I'm going to take the second piercing whale. So we have answers to the multi-hits, some relic-related answers to the big hits. I really like the block potion to um, keep buffer, but we, since we have alchemize, I'm just going to use the regen potion in the boss fights and get a new potion. All right. Our penultimate upgrade of the run. I'm thinking upgrading either tools or the alchemize. Probably tools here. As much as I'd like to upgrade something like blade dance or foot. The footwork's just not doing enough. Probably don't play it most of the time. Thank goodness we got the ornamental fan. I'm really not sure how we're going to block Beat of Death, though. That's going to be really, really tricky. Going to have to be very diligent. It's about stuff. All right, going for Donu first here. Stop the strength scaling. It might actually be that the dazed are problematic for us, but I don't know. I think it matters too much. Yeah. Play this to remove artifacts. All right, no pocket watch that turn. We also take no damage. We have buffer to protect us partially here. What are protecting we need? Let's go tools. Accuracy, take 15, draw 8 next turn. Draw 9, actually, even better. But I think we're going to see ourselves start to fall apart in the second half of these big boss fights. We just don't generate enough block to really do much of anything at all. Nor do we have enough energy to make much happen. Discard Finisher, I think. Thinking I want to use Terror, Piercing Whale, and Malaise to shut down Decca this turn. Play Phantasmal Killer for next turn. Try to kill Decca next turn. Um, by keeping Ritual Dagger and Finisher. So we discard this then. Or discard this, even. attack play. Twenty-two times six, and I can make it more than that, too. I don't want to kill him, but I want to get him close to dead. So if I play this shiv, we have too many, too many damages. Instance on four is going to be correct for the next fight. Oh, 
All right, we made it through our first boss fight. We still have pretty good health total left, so I'm at least reasonably confident we're going to get to go to Act 4 here. Our opponent is the Time Eater, who punishes us for playing too many guards. Pierce, uh, piercing Whale Plus fully blocks this. Thankfully, that's the upgraded Piercing Whale. So I think I just want to play... One, we have Akabako Riddle with Holes. This is 18 times 5. That's amazing. Get nerded on, sir. We don't want, definitely want to play the Terror, too. And we want to play Piercing Whale. So I can either draw more cards next turn, or I can play these to gain strength. I'll draw the extra cards. We're intangible next turn. Just need a little bit of block to make sure we don't lose our buffer here. And we have it. Let's go plans, survivor, accuracy. Keep alchemize finisher. Double finisher is tempting, but it's not gonna work. Time to just either debuffing or doing the big single attack this turn. Big single attack is a good use of our buffer. So we want to make we want to line up the super duper powerful phantasmal killer turn next turn. We want to retain the blade dance plus and a finisher. And we want to play as many cards as possible this turn as well. Oh, specifically, we need to play six cards this turn for that to work out. Potion, okay. So realistically, playing three cards means playing Blade Dance, which means not getting more energy next turn. That's okay. Uh, I'm not going to keep the Ritual Dagger. It's not my priority at the moment. I do only draw four here, though. Oh, good. We got the other Blade Dance. Thank goodness. Prepare to have your butt handed to you, Time Eater. Kapow! I guess I could have kept the Ritual Dagger instead of the finisher there. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing trail can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of these bosses? Now, it might have been wiser to set up the burner for turn two of the next fight. However, I'm hoping we can just outright kill one of them really quickly. Question is, do we heal to gain a card reward with the Dreamcatcher, or do we upgrade? Another energy upgrade like the Alchemize could be crucial here. In the Alchemize upgrade. Or the actually no, the terror upgrade rather than Alchemize. Yes, terror upgrade. Thing is, I don't think we actually have enough block cards that a kunai would change anything here. Um, but a tough bandage is good. Other option again, rest, look at one more card reward. You know, it could be could be a Wraith form in here. I've already got one upgraded Calculated Gamble and one unupgraded. I don't feel the need to upgrade the other one at the moment. I'm going to upgrade the Alchemize. And a dad joke for the crowd. Or, uh, yeah, sorry, Terror, not Alchemize. Why are potions so pretty to look at? Because beauty is in the alchemize of the beholder. All right, merchants. What do you got? Not much. Ornithopter is nice. 
Duke pot's nice. I don't know about the rest of it. I can't say this is a huge difference maker. However, because we have Courier, every time we purchase something, there'll be a new something behind it. So I think the first thing I want to do is buy the Toy Ornithopter for 126. We get to look at a new relic behind it. Funnel does remove artifact from the elites, many are noting. That's a, a good reason to think about picking this up. We definitely need some help for that fight. The red needle is a lot of block. Well, not it's a little bit of block consistently for a lot of money. Probably not worth it here. Let me make sure I can still afford everything I want here if I do the funnel next. Yes. Buying the funnel still leaves me enough for everything else. If I buy accuracy, yes, there will be a new power underneath it. That's correct. Move the riddle with holes. Probably remove the distraction rather than the riddle with holes. Although, let's see what's behind the twisted funnel first. It is the tough bandages. Yes, Twitch chat. Yes. All right, well, I do regret not upgrading Calculated Gamble, but still, that is a huge find. I'm going to buy that instead of any of the other stuff that I might have wanted. Dupe pots. Heck, no thank you. Tough bandages. Every time you discard a card during your turn, gain three block. Not only do we have a tools to trade, but again, double Calculated Gamble, one of which is upgraded. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, I think that gives us about as best the odds as we could possibly have here. Next up, we do battle. Getting attacked on turn one by both of them anyway, so... You know, I actually don't feel like the incense burner setup was going to make much of a difference. This is a great time for Piercing Whale Plus. Do I get to keep the buffer? That's the real question. I think so. So thanks to the funnel, both artifact layers are gone. That's actively helpful right now because the Piercing Whale blocks for a heck of a lot. Yes, with two fan procs, as long as I end my turn facing the Spire Shield, we won't even lose our buffer. And we can play the Distraction, getting a Concentrate, which does unfortunately nothing. I think we want to focus our damage on the Spire Shield. It's really unlikely that we kill the Spear next turn. And I can block longer against the shield, too. Uh, the spear, that is. And block longer against the spear. Might have to take some damage next turn. I'm okay with that. Why not dagger spray last? Have the shirt can help more because Akabeko made it do more, much more damage if played first. Yeah. So we probably activate Pocket Watch on this turn. Problem is we likely take a ton of damage here as well. One, two, three, four. So we can actually kill the Spire Shield here, and that worked out really well. So we go one, two, three, four, and then we get one energy back. So this would be eight times four at most. That's not enough. Actually, no, nine times four. 36, 36. So those two there, these two here. And then finish her here. So we take two hits, taking 20 damage here. Since currently on four, the intangible next turn. We need to be setting up the incense burner for the next fight, or else. Or else. pretty good, though. I think I'll take a random potion over the colorless potion. We also get to heal five for using this, so that seems pretty 
pretty reasonable. Fair enough. So that's three cards played. Keep the strategy and the gamble for the moment. Since burner on four for heart, I imagine, would be our best bets. Best bet. Actually, no, maybe we want it on three, because that way, if we get the big hit first, buffer blocks it, probably. If we get the multi hit first, then we block the big hit with the intangible. Yeah, I think three is actually the right number upon review. So let's set Incense Burner to three for that reason. Kill next turn here. This way we also get to level our dagger. Quite happily. To be taking damage at this point. Okay, we get a strawberry for more health, a blood vial for two more health, and a duplication potion to let us duplicate a card of our choice. We also get a nightmare if we want one, allowing us to make many copies of any one card. Nightmare tools the trade, nightmare ritual dagger. There's some interesting options here. Hell, nightmare alchemize. Or nightmare calculated gamble. That's right. And we have a liquid memories and a dupe pot, so let's uh, let's make that a plan, shall we? But yeah, I think you're right. Nightmare Calculator Gamble is going to be the winner here. All right, 84 health going into the heart. Please show me a block card. Thank you. Can't ask for much better than this. This is the opening draw that we wanted here. Not gonna play this gamble or this whale. I'm gonna go dash. Play all the attacks. I don't want to draw any of these attacks again. Um, so we'll draw fewer cards next turn. But I think that's okay. Okay. That'll have to do. I don't want to duplicate anything here. We get to play dash, we get to play the footwork, we get to do all the attacks. I could just go dash footwork one attack, but then I'm I'm cycling all these cards that I don't want to draw again. So let's just lose them now. Has to be dash first or we lose the buffer. Gotta be very careful about that. And I'll play the attacks first as well for the ornamental fan block. Still play three more cards. Thank you, fan. I'm a big fan of your work. Is the multi-hit first? Alas, I drew Piercing Whale, but I can't block the Beat of Death unless I use the Liquid Memories here. I don't think I care. We go Piercing Whale, Phantasmal Killer, Slimed. We're intangible next turn. We don't take any damage this turn, other than the small amount of Beat of Death damage. So the buffer is wasted, essentially, but it doesn't matter because we've taken zero damage first cycle, and that's excellent. Can't do much better than that. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Not playing the Blade Dance at all, because we want the draw from Pocket Watch here. Alright, here's the Will Laid plans, here's the Calculated Gamble.
do have six attacks. So I could do well aid plans, neutralize, blade dance, skewer, dagger spray. It's actually very reasonable. We get to do a lot of damage. Remember, we have to do damage during this fight. Or we're not going nowhere. Doing bonus damage this turn, so it'll be hard to beat that. Or I can do dagger spray, use the energy to play the well laid plans. That's even better. Keep the distraction. Should have played the skewer though, to increment and chuck it by one. A very minor mistake there. Here we'll play three cards again: Survivor, Alchemize, Tools of the Trade. Although there's nothing to alchemize yet. Hmm. Do I want to Liquid Memories the double damage card? Maybe. How are we going to get through Artifact to make Malaise work? Maybe I don't need to. I could also dupe the malaise. Could just play the rid with holes, survivor rid with holes, tools of the trade, deal 35 here. It's not too bad. Keep the alchemize for later, since I've still got really good potions to use. Do we ever gamble here? I much prefer to keep gamble in my hands so that I may nightmare it next turn. I don't think duping tools is as good as uh, duping the nightmare. What are good hits from distraction? Nightmare? Maybe a bouncing flask would be welcomed. Card draw would be okay. Doesn't look like I'm going to play it this turn, so I'm just going to keep the alchemize and the gamble. kind of a do-nothing turn, which is a little bit worrisome. I think it'll be worth it, though. Okay, still no sign of the nightmare, unfortunately. It's a bit worrisome. Hmm. So, like I said, I'm thinking we might have to dupe malaise. Duping Malaise on this turn would be really good. So if we dupe Malaise, we shred the artifact and then set the heart's next multi-attack to zero. After I dupe the Malaise, I can still play Terror to apply that permanently and then Calculated Gamble to block this hit. To not keep Alchemize for the extra draw. Oh yeah, because we have tools. Hmm, maybe. Yes, we did try to draw a 10 there. I think I'm going to dupe this malaise. I think that's really, really helpful here. Also, permanently removes two strength off the heart for future cycles. I need this to be a four energy malaise, so I'm not going to play any of their cards first. I'm going to keep Blade Dance and Nightmare. Actually, no, I'm going to discard Nightmare. Play Dance and Finisher. Shame that was four cards. But getting this to, to happen was really important to me. Can you keep burn? You cannot. And energy is so short in supply here. Do as much as I can, damage-wise. Oh, I see what I did here. Hmm. 
Good news is we're intangible for one of the attacks next cycle as well, so we've got survivability sorted for quite a while. It's time to start doing some real damage. This is going to be Alchemize Phantasmal Ritual Dagger. Next turn we keep Blade Dance, Piercing Whale, draw these. Ouch. So we're going to reshuffle the draw pile again, huh? You know, the Nightmare hasn't worked out draw-wise in the way that I'd wanted it to. Multi-hit, perfect. Block that with Piercing Whale. We're intangible next turn. No problemo here. There's the Nightmare again. I'm going to use that now on Calculated Gamble minus. It's not the upgraded Gamble, but this fight is close enough to done. I don't think it matters. Finisher, though. Thirty damage neutralize. Heck yeah. Survivor, this. Good memories, this. Copy this. Play this. These two. A hundred and fifty damage riddle with holes. The power. The power, chat. Oh, good lord, what a difficult run this was. G freaking G, Twitch chat. Make it number 13 in a row. I'll take it. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.